Good looking All right, crowd. so we're going to get serious now because we're <laughs> enterprise software people. Two of us are, or three of us are wearing jackets, so that's, so we got three out of four. You, yeah. I've You're the Enterprise 2.0, Dan. Sexy Mustache Enterprise too. software, Bruce. Right. Sexy. Um, all right, so, so Dan, so Box is document collaboration and sharing and uh, kind of management of, of, of media. Into it, we know, is accounting, tax, running small businesses. And, and Zendesk is customer satisfaction support. Very different functions and activities. But I'm trying to tie what the three companies are about together. And uh, I had a hard time doing it. But Maybe you can help by just defining what you think is the, the, the hallmarks of an enterprise 2.0 company with Intuit being kind of a, 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 new, a new entrant in that category. So Mikkel, why don't you start? You're here, right here next to me. Uh, I think that um, I think a new generation of software companies, of enterprise software companies, starts much more with the customer experience, with the user experience, as we used to see it in the consumer software world, where it's all about adoption, it's all about making things easy so people can figure out using their VCRs or their computers or their phones or whatever. And I think that is moving to the enterprise software, and we've seen a lot of great companies uh, taking lead in that, amongst them uh, Zendesk. So we really try to focus on democratizing and making things as simple, as easy as possible, mm -hmm. because companies, enterprises, they realize there's a direct correlation between ease of use and kind of employee happiness, adoption rates, and ultimately customer satisfaction. You guys, would anyone disagree with that, or anything to add to that? No, in fact, I think that's a big part of what these three companies have in common, is a fanatical focus on the customer, on the end user. Uh, we all use similar techniques to sort of measure how we're doing with our customers, and we all believe that given consumerization in the enterprise as such a powerful driver of adoption, you got to deliver an unbelievably easy product that at the same time meets the needs of businesses of all sizes. Yeah. And obviously we started that way as a consumer focused company, but as we started to evolve into what you called Enterprise 2.0, the other thing we've learned is your technology has to be open. open. It has to be something that's going to allow continuity and integrate with everything that operates in a small business or a large company's framework. And it really changes your mindset and also the way you architect your products. You have to literally begin to think about being an open platform with APIs that enable everything to interoperate with your product, just the way you would have built for your own features. So a lot of it, I mean, Intuit's kind of a, an, an exception in the valley. I mean, the stock's been just an incredible run, kind of has the space to itself. But, but Box and Zendesk do compete with the much bigger companies. I mean, there are packages you could get from Microsoft, from Oracle. Uh, from SAP that do similar things. But what, what is getting, is anything changing with the big guys that are, that are stopping them from doing this? Are they starting to wake up? Or, is, or do you have a field to yourselves still? I think that, I think that we, we, we have a, companies like Box and Sandesk and other companies have a tremendous opportunity because we, we've grown up with this DNA and, and that is how we think about our products, that is how we think about our technology. And we have architected our technology for this world. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas, if you are an established company, if, if you come from the world of on-premise software, if you come from the world of, of traditional kind of uh, thinking, traditional platforms and so on, it is just very, very complicated to refactor. Also, your, like, even your sales organization to this world, subscription -based, selling subscription-based services is very, very different from selling, um, selling on-premise and uh, perpetual licenses. And you, hold, you have to tune your entire financial model uh, to do that, so I think it will be very, very compli it's very complicated for traditional businesses to adopt to this cloud world. Uh, well, Dan, I mean, you, I guess one of my recent fixations is on the economics of, of subscription software and, and marketing and the, 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 you know, the expense it takes to acquire a customer and the unit economics, which are okay, but like overall in scaling these kind of businesses to get to a billion, two billion, five billion in revenue can be painful. Can you, can you walk us through like, how that evolution has gone, how it's going to go? It's pretty capital intensive, that's yeah. for sure. I wouldn't <laughs> say it's painful. And you know, the, the thing people don't really understand is how important DNA is in the behavior of organizations. If you're Oracle, if you're SAP, you've been doing this for decades. You, your whole mindset, your whole company's way of being is focused on perpetual license. It's focused on sort of heavy iron, really big companies as your customers. What the new generation of sexy enterprise 2.0 companies have is just a completely different approach to the market. 
much more end user focused, much more focused on ease of use, but also on ease of doing business with. And that sort of brings you back to the subscription business model, right? Which is a way better way to do business with your customers. You end up absolutely with pretty high customer acquisition cost. But if you look at Box, for example, when we sign up $10 million worth of customers, mm -hmm. next year they'll be paying us $13 million just through the natural growth in seats and, uh, and upgrades. So yeah, the acquisition cost is high, but the lifetime value of these customers yeah. is also extremely high. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Brad, you've, you've switched. There was a, a kind of a cool switch in, in, into it. It used to be sort of on-premise. Yes. And you made everything cloud-based. Yes. I, I don't know where you're at with that evolution. How many of your thousands and thousands of customers are now doing their taxes and accounting in the cloud? But so what, of our 55 million customers we have worldwide, 40 million of them are right now in the cloud. And you've got to kind of go back before on-premise. We were born in the era of DOS. Yeah. And so, you know, the old joke in the engineering world is the reason why God created heaven and earth in seven days is because he didn't have legacy technology and an install base of customers to worry about. And so one of the things we've had to do is we've had to navigate what these guys are talking about. We've had to be able to move in during platform shifts, reimagine the way we develop our products and reinvent our technology. And we're very excited now because we see this as a huge opportunity and we are leaning heavily into the cloud, into mobile devices, and ultimately the ways for us to serve customers around the globe. And it's been exciting. So what are some of the things you can do once they're in the cloud that you couldn't have done before? Oh, amazing things. First of all, the ability to have collaboration. You know, small businesses operate very closely with their accountant. It used to be they had to take a snapshot of their books, let their accountant reconcile it, and send it back. Now they literally are looking at the books simultaneously, the accountant's looking over their shoulder and keeping them clean while they continue to operate their business. The other is accounting now becomes invisible. A small business owner, 60% of them operate on wheels. They mow lawns, they clean pools. They're out doing whatever they're doing, and they can actually send the invoice or accept the payment, and then the accounting happens back home while they just move on to their next customer. So they're literally able to go without thinking about bookkeeping. But what about the product development and pro innovation? I mean, you can also now see what people are doing more uh, often, like how they use it, where they, where they fall short, things they don't use. So that's probably informing your product development. Very much so. I mean, we grew up a company with Follow Me Homes. If you've read any of the case studies on our founder, Scott Cook, we do 10,000 hours of Follow Me Homes where we observe customers in their natural environment. We're not stalkers. We get invited in. But now, in the cloud, you're actually able to observe 10x that with the customer behaviors. You can see where they're dropping out of the product, what questions are stumping them, and you can make real-time changes and improve the product. Right. So there's this natural pull, I mean, in the enterprise space to go horizontal or to go vertical. A lot of companies do really well with just, you know, just doing uh, hospitality software or, or you know, gyms, that kind of thing, like front desk. Where do you guys, where do you all stand in that? I mean, your, your software can be sold to anyone, Michael. I mean, everyone needs customer satisfaction, customer support. Uh, but do you feel like you need to go make acquisitions in, in, in trucking or in something, in hospitals or, you know, <laughs> boxes made some medical imaging? Acquisitions, what's... We're doing trucking next. <laughs> trucking. Yeah, trucking's a big industry. <laughs> I think that, so I think first and foremost, we are in an industry that everybody needs. Like everybody needs great customer service software. So we've been very fortunate that we can sell to everybody. Like we have small Korean bike shops using our software. We have big government contractors using our software. We have, we have customers all over the world. So that's, we, we're very lucky with that. But I think also that with technology today, you are capable of using the exact same product stack, the exact same product platform, and have that same software serve that free person shop while they serve that multi 10,000 employees business. Um, and, and that is something new about technology, and that make, gives much more agility to your business model. It gives much more agility to uh, your growth. And, 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 and redefines the market in many ways. And, and I think that is why a company like Centers, for example, that we continue to, to serve small businesses around the world while we move upstream and serve the large enterprises. And can I build on that, Bruce, because yes. this is a, uh, something we've learned as well. I don't think it's a trade-off that has to be made now. Yeah. Because ultimately, with the reimagined version of our small business accounting, we can go into the cloud. If you're a three-person florist in Dublin, we go into the cloud and look at 700,000 cases of other customers using the product. We look for all three-person florists, 
and all of them in Dublin, and we set up your accounting product the way those floors set up theirs, and it's now customized as a vertical solution in less than 10 seconds. How it's personalized? What percentage of the feature set is actually you, you know, personalized? It eliminates quite a bit. It chooses how your reports are set up, what inventory you typically would have, yeah. what kind of billing cycle you would typically do. Yeah. And then if you choose to be different, you go in and the system learns. And if more people prefer your solution, then that becomes the more preferred solution. So it literally becomes vertical with more customers using it. And the last time I was, I was visiting with you, 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 you guys were showing me some stuff where, where uh, you could find out how much people are spending on postage yeah. in your area, how much people have spent. If you want to go buy a ladder, you could see what people are spending on. Have you, have you released that yet? Because it was Oh, cool. absolutely, yeah. It's called QuickBooks Online Trends. And yeah. you literally, a small business owner is a very lonely job. Many of us who are founders here know that. And so you can look at how your accounts receivable stack up against other companies that look like you, whether or not you're charging the right price, whether or not you're paying the right for your supplies. And it compares basically all your financial metrics against others who look just like you, so you can make better decisions. Right. So, I mean, you've managed to levitate the market cap without having big customers like GE. I mean, you got, I mean, Dan and, and Mikko, like, you like to go after GE and Ford and, as big reference customers, saying, hey, we could compete with the big guys, because that's part of the optics. We signed up GE. Well, you signed we up, just no, go GE's after. a big customer, but. <laughs> 300,000 seats, baby, there one of the largest go. SaaS deployments in history. The big elephant hunter sits to the right <laughs> of me here. But do you need a whole different operation to, to, to help to, to work with GE to make sure that they get what they need? Or is that, does that cost a lot more money? Per, you know, the way you go to market, the way you serve a three-person SMB, and the way you serve a Procter & Gamble, a General Electric, a Schneider Electric, a British Gas, very different, right? Uh, British Gas, it's a face-to-face -face experience, very high-touch service. Mm -hmm. GE absolutely has got a list of stuff they want us to do to the product, whereas, you know, the five-person SMB doesn't get that same kind of high-touch experience. But it's the same technology with the same security, the same scalability, and that's the amazing thing about the cloud. Um, so let's talk about M&A a little bit and growth, like ways to grow. You can obviously grow by acquiring you know, a market, a uh, region, or a vertical. What's, what, are you, what are you looking at right now? What's in the pipeline? <laughs> There's no one listening, so you can just you can, It's just us, just us four. So we, we, we don't have a, a big M&A strategy. We made one acquisition, some great technology, great team, and we will be optimistic if we see great uh, tools that helps us move our business forward. We have one. <laughs> that was I'll let them off the hook. You got out of Dodge that? pretty quick on that one. Okay. <laughs> we have to come I'm back here. To I got a lot of people in the audience. You know, first of all, I would say the thing we had to learn over 30 years is making an acquisition does not mean you can't build something yourself. It means you're humble enough to recognize there are great solutions inside and outside, and together you can achieve something a lot faster and a lot bigger. But we also got some great counsel from John Doerr from Clowner Perkins, who used to be on our board. I remember he sat one time and he said, I suppose if you do enough acquisitions, a strategy will eventually emerge. <laughs> and the real headline there is you have to have a game plan and a strategy and what's your roadmap, what are you trying to deliver, and then make the choice. Can I build this myself or is there someone in the market who's doing it better and faster that I can bring in? So we did 10 acquisitions last year, right. primarily in the small business space and primarily in global areas. And one of them, DocStock, at least it sounds a lot like what Box does. Yeah, no, it's not what Box does. Box is a partner of ours, and uh, we're working closely with them. Right. DocStock's basically using the capabilities of crowdsourcing for people to upload videos that help you do things that small businesses struggle with, so they learn from each other. Uh -huh. And it makes that very solo entrepreneur feel like they're a part of a crowd. You know, Bruce, this is the amazing thing about the openness of these cloud-based technologies. We just announced with Intuit that we're bringing a joint solution to market to help accountants and their clients interact with each other around documents, invoices, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's all delivered through the QuickBooks online user experience and, and UI, but the underlying technology is Box. And that's the kind of thing that you can only do with cloud-based technologies. But just to go back to the acquisition thing yeah. and, and to tie it back to verticals, what you see, I think, happening now is not only are people using these horizontal solutions for very generic sort of, I want to do my business on my iPad use cases, but you're starting to see the automation of very fundamentally important business process. We just in acquired a company called MedXT that does some really interesting stuff in the previewing of medical images like x-rays on iPads. And the reason we did that is Stanford Hospital is in the process of rolling out 20,000 seats of our service. MD Anderson Cancer Center is using Box, and they don't want to use it for sort of generic content access. They want to automate fundamental business process in the hospital. And that's where acquisition and a little bit of vertically oriented, business process oriented technology can make a huge difference. 
So, so what, I mean, everyone always talks about Enterprise 2.0 killing the old, the, you know, the old guard, and uh, you know, the innovative, the dis creative disruption, the innovator's dilemma that they can't get out of their own way. But they seem like really hard to kill. I mean, Oracle continues to even grow a little bit. Uh, w when are we going to see like an absolute destruction of the old guard? 17 years from now. 17? <laughs> no, there aren't going to be any corporate data centers 20 years from now. Nobody in this room's got a file server. Mm -hmm. Nobody in this room is running their, their back office on a PC in the yeah. corner. They're all doing it in the cloud. We're seeing the biggest replatforming of enterprise IT technology in history. Yeah. There is going to be no on-premise technology left 20 years from now except in Department of Defense applications. And you know, the legacy players, the Oracles, the SAPs, they're either going to adapt to that new world or they're going to be left behind. And I can vouch for that since we serve small businesses and consumers, that's the current state today. And that will continue to move up market and the enterprise companies will have to evolve and adapt or they will die. What's, uh, what's amazing is I was just talking to Chobani Yogurt, that they're doing, they just hired an IT person yeah. and they just switched over to, they were doing quick, they got to a billion dollars in revenue on QuickBooks, yeah. which is like crazy. I could have helped them get to three billion. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, are you, there, like, what is your closest competitor? I mean, is, is, are you ripping, is uh, people ripping stuff out to use Zendesk, or is it kind of departments that didn't have a customer satisfaction or support, or is it all startup? Because there's some big companies. What were they using before? Well, I think, um, I think that's interesting that, of course, we are replacing a lot of legacy software. And there is, a, in our industry, there's a lot of different legacy software. There's, for certain uh, verticals and industries and geographies, there's a lot of legacy software that we're replacing. But I think also what's really interesting about new generation of enterprise software is because we have such a focus on democratizing and, and simplifying the experience and making it easy and available for everybody, we are also expanding the market dramatically. So that companies that didn't think they had the resources or the time or could do these things, for them suddenly we are a tool that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's one of the, the big changes of the new generation of enterprise software, that we are democratizing the market and made it available for many more people. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thanks thank a lot, you. Bruce.